One of Washington's most distinctive memorials is also among its most cryptic. Nameless, sexless, this shrouded figure by the great sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens was placed over the grave of Clover Adams, the photographer wife of historian Henry Adams. She took her own life in December 1885. Six months later, while visiting the artist's studio, Henry Adams had an inspiration. Asking a young male model to take a seated position, he wrapped the youth's torso in an American Indian rug he found on the premises. His own part in designing what Adams' friend and Washington neighbor John Hay called the finest monument in America would be kept secret. The work is indescribably noble and imposing, wrote Hay. Infinite wisdom, a past without beginning, and a future without end, a repose after limitless experience. The public began calling the statue grief. Fast forward now to the first week of March 1933. Henry Adams had long since joined Clover beneath the uninscribed grave marker at Rock Creek. On her first full day in Washington, the wife of President-elect Franklin Roosevelt invited a friend to accompany her on a pilgrimage. Catching a cab, the two women drove past the house on R Street, where Eleanor Roosevelt had first learned of her husband's wartime affair with her social secretary. Reaching Rock Creek Cemetery, they halted. There the woman, about to become First Lady of the United States, led her companion to a marble bench. In the old days, when we lived here, said Mrs. Roosevelt, I was much younger and not so very wise. Sometimes I'd feel very unhappy and sorry for myself. When I was feeling that way, if I could manage it, I'd come out here, alone, and sit and look at that woman. And I'd always come away somehow feeling better and stronger. Eleanor Roosevelt was wrong about the gender of the enigmatic bronze figure, but she captured perfectly the spiritual balm provided by the memorial its sculptor christened the peace of God that passeth understanding.